A tragic accident in Ephrata critically injures two high school students. The two car crash happened on Thursday in the 800 block of Oak Boulevard near Ephrata Senior High School. Authorities say five students are believed to have been involved in the accident. Two students, Brooke Overly and Matthias Hoffer, were critically injured. The initial investigation strongly suggests the cause of the crash to be substance abuse as well as driving while texting. No charges have been filed yet. A safe room has been set up at the Ephrata High School to assist students having difficulty coping with the accident. My son was probably the most talented guy I've ever met. I used to always tell him that he would go places. He would always give me this smile. It was like he didn't know. He was so afraid. That's what I remember the most about him. He wanted to make me proud. He wanted to be somebody. 
he didn't know how. I'd sometimes find him crying up in his room. I'd sit there and look him in the eye and say, Please don't, Dad. Please don't be disappointed. My mom called to tell me the news. When I heard her voice, I already knew what happened. I heard her sob and scream and choke on her spit as she mumbled out, Brooke's dead. My God, Brooke's dead. I heard Dad take the phone from Mom and her sobs grew quiet. I heard his breath and the sound of his voice. He didn't have much to say. Come home, he said. Just come home. Then he hung up. When we got the call, all I could think of was him as a boy again. I remembered the way he used to play out in the yard and shout for me to come watch him. I remember the way he'd sit at the kitchen table late at night and draw until I'd find him to sleep next to his crayons. I remember the way he'd smile. i never forget that smile. The way it could light up a room. When they rushed us into the ER, all I could remember was the sound of everything. The heart monitor was going crazy. Blood was gurgling out of his throat as he screamed. Doctors were shouting for nurses to keep him stable. And he just kept crying. He kept crying and crying and crying. Then he looked me in the eye and said, I'm sorry, Dad. I'm so sorry. Then he was gone. Everything was a blur after that. The cop cars, the flashing lights, the phone calls, the letters. We were stars for all the wrong reasons. At school, I'd be walking down the hallways and I'd see people doing absolutely nothing. Kids kissing, some laughing, some alone. Teachers running in and out of classrooms. Books and papers flying all over the place. So when I passed by, everyone would recognize my face and the whole world would stop. Like a rain cloud just marched in with its wet boots. Some stared, some said they were sorry. I didn't say a word though, because I was sorry too. That's not the way his life was meant to be. He was meant for so much more. He was supposed to go off to college. He was supposed to get married and have kids. He was supposed to be happy. He was supposed to be at my funeral. But he couldn't. You know... What haunts me the most isn't the crash or the news reports. It's not that he died bleeding. It's not that my son died crying. It's that he died believing I was disappointed. It's that he died believing that he was nothing. It's that he died wishing he could start over. I didn't cry at the funeral. My mom sobbed. My grandma sobbed. My great-grandma sobbed. But I didn't. I couldn't. And to tell you the truth, I didn't know why until I looked over at my dad. 
He wasn't crying either. There was no pain in his eyes. There was no anger. He didn't do a single thing. And that's when I knew he was nothing. When I knew I was nothing. When my sister died, she took a part of us with her. There weren't going to be any more hot days on the beach or stupid nights in bed when she and I would sing until we fell asleep. Or early mornings when she and I would wake up and stare at the sun rising. You see, when I got the call from my mom, when I saw the look in my dad's eyes, when my sister died, I died.